Hi, everyone. It is March 9. Is it March 9? March 9? I believe it is. Yes, it is. Okay. Well, listen to this. Good morning, Farm Doc. I um, guess I'm going on a little rant here this morning because I'm kind of pissed off about what I heard yesterday. And it's an executive order called 30 by 30. And basically what it what it's doing or what, what President Biden wants to do is take um, 30% of the nation's land and water away from privately owned or local and state owned governments and basically take it away from us for our use and turn it into conservation um, to battle climate change. And um, I guess it really disturbs me and I think it's something that we probably need to be following pretty close because. I don't really want to give up 30% of my land, especially to Biden. But uh, we're having our first meeting here in Nebraska, March 9th at Valentine, and I'll try to get that information uploaded here. Nobody should be surprised. We knew this was coming. If you don't know anything about Agenda 21, Agenda 2030, you might want to start looking into it if you have private property you know, I was thinking about it. I read the executive order. Ugh. It's long and boring. All right. Um, I'll read just a little bit of it, but, you know, it's not going to happen overnight. So some of you who own property, depending on how much property you own, land you own, and Depending on your age, you might be able to get through life without having anything snatched from you, but you cannot guarantee it. So we really did not stop any of these agendas. And well, here it is. So there's little time left to avoid setting the world on a dangerous, potentially catastrophic climate trajectory and we're all going to die well we are <laughs> um, so we have a new uh, presidential appointed office the special presidential envoy for climate to elevate the issue of climate change and the United States will immediately begin the process of developing it's nationally determined contribution under the Paris Agreement. It's all been going along just swell. In a video that I posted just a couple of days ago showing you, we've got more than 450 mayors all over the country implementing the Paris Agreement. So I'm not going to, you know, read all of this, but... You know, I just find it very interesting. We must listen to science. No, we must listen to the lies. We all know it. A whole lot of Americans just can't grow up to do research on their own. To understand that everything that the conspiracy theorists have been saying throughout the years is exactly right. So I did read it, and, you know, I had to read a lot of it to see, okay, that man is exactly right. 30% of privately owned land. That's going to go down swell. All right, I just want you to see. I do have a playlist of videos. Global Warming climate change nonsense and some of these videos 500 scientists write the united nations no climate emergency but instead let's focus on what greta has to say the climate change machine massive manipulation of monstrous miscredence <laughs> quotes of scientists who dispute global warming and wow, there are many more on that side than there are who are pushing this 
climate change propaganda. So, uh, climate change lie, the basis of Agenda 2030, sustainability must be stopped. Global warming hysteria explodes. Compilation of scientists speak truth about the global warming. It's a fraud. All right. Um, you can... That you see, this was posted on Rosa Corey's uh, Twitter page. And if you don't know anything about Agenda 21, 2030, you might want to pick up Rosa's book, Behind the Green Mask, United Nations Agenda 21. Or you could listen to Rosa, who is right here, connect the dots, global warming lie, deliberate weather disasters, and Agenda 21, 2030, and they're pulling it all together. Also have this, the quotes of scientists who dispute global warming. Here I posted this video, and I put all the quotes in pictures, you know, of our fabulous, fabulous, uh, Global warming, Ben. Our fabulous atmosphere that now just looks, well, kind of like it has COVID-19. Billions of dollars of grant money are flowing into the pockets of those on the man-made global warming bandwagon. No global warming, the money dries up. This is big money. Make no mistake about it. Always follow the money trail and it tells a story. James Spann, American Meteorological Society, certified meteorologic, uh, meteorologist. Well, more quotes that I found. But I also have an Agenda 21, 2030 playlist with a whole lot of videos. So if you don't know anything about it, you can read about it or you can watch videos and learn because they are coming for your property. Now many of you might not know anything about Agenda 21 2030. You might just know about the Great Reset. Well, this is it. it this is it. You know, Greta Thunberg, Extinction Rebellion Exposed. This is all of the manipulation. All of these groups, these activist groups, the NGOs, the Bill McGibbons, all funded to push the agenda. We, we live in such a profoundly corrupt world. It's, it's very, it's, it's not pleasant. So this is one page of a whole lot of scientists that I began highlighting some of them and I didn't get all of them. So let me just read some of them. I will link below. You can read for yourself, but, oh, but, and these quotes were, this was a while ago, but they all, uh, are quite relevant today. Only 52 scientists agreed to the International Panel for Intergovernmental Panel. Not science, governmental panel. On climate change, United Nations. 52 scientists made up the consensus. All scientists agree around the world man is causing climate change. Not true. See, when you own mainstream media and you own all of these government officials, you can push an awful lot of lies and keep thousands, no, tens of thousands, well, hundreds of thousands, of scientists out of mainstream media. Look at what we're doing with COVID-19. 
we're listening to Bill Gates as the expert on vaccines and infectious diseases. A Microsoft guy? Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> uh, Fauci? We listen to two people. And then they bring on their, you know, mainstream media experts. People listen to that. And then they won't. They, their minds are just... Their minds have been so corrupted by mainstream media lying that they can't take in that there are, again, with that, COVID-19, just like climate change, climate change, uh, thousands upon thousands of experts who say a very different, well, they speak a very different tune about this COVID-19 than the expert that we listen to, Fauci. Same thing with climate change. 52 scientists made up that consensus. In contrast, 650 scientists have publicly announced their disagreement with the theory of man-made global warming. In addition, 31,000 American scientists and researchers signed the Oregon petition stating their direct opposition to the Kyoto Global Warming Agreement. Um, And you can check it out. I actually have a video on that. Not entirely sure it's the same, but yeah, 31,000, 31,487 at the time that I posted the video. That's how many scientists and researchers had signed on to a petition that stated man is not causing global warming. So you can check that out in this video. The Global Warming Petition Project. And I don't remember seeing anything about Oregon, but here we go. Even Leonardo da Vinci they have. Anyone who conducts an argument by appealing to authority is not using his intelligence. He is just using his memory. Anyone who argues by appealing to mainstream media Something's wrong with that brain. Any acceptance of authority is the very denial of truth. Krishnamurti. Galileo, in Questions of Science, the authority of a thousand is not worth the humble reasoning of a single individual. Now, there's an awful lot of scientists, and you can read the name as I go along, um, but John Dewey, skepticism the mark, and even the pose of an educated mind. We have so dumbed down the public, it's phenomenal and scary. So, how about a United Nations scientist, a retired Environment Canada scientist? Do I have to read the names? You guys know I... Something's wrong with my brain, and I can't read names. Unfortunately, the IPCC climate change documents do not provide an objective assessment of the Earth's temperature trends and associated climate change. As one of the invited expert reviewers for the 2007 IPCC documents, I have pointed out the flawed review process used by the IPCC IPCC scientists In one of my letters, I have also pointed out in my letter that an increasing number of scientists are now questioning the hypothesis of greenhouse gas-induced warming of the Earth's surface and suggesting a stronger impact of solar variability variability and large-scale atmospheric circulation patterns on the observed temperature. They don't listen to these scientists who oppose what the IPCC, you know, their reports, their summaries, what they want to put out. And a whole lot of them have had their reputations trashed. Climate change, organized religion, reasoned questioning of its mantras, regarded as a form of blasphemy. President of the Czech Republic, 
um, Vakel Baklav Klaus, as someone who lived under communism for most of my life, I feel obliged to say that the biggest threat to freedom, democracy, the market economy, and prosperity at the beginning of the 21st century is not communism or its various softer variants. Communism was replaced by the threat of ambitious environmentalism. They're coming to take your property under the guise of, you've got to give it up because the planet is just going to explode if you don't. Creating an ideology pegged to carbon dioxide is a dangerous nonsense. The present alarm on climate change is an instrument of social control, a pretext for major businesses and political battle. It became an ideology, which is concerning. Delgado Domingos, environmental scientist. Will Harper, Princeton University physicist, former director of energy research at the Department of Energy. I had the privilege of being fired by Al Gore since I refused to go along with his alarmism. I have spent a long research career studying physics that is closely related to the greenhouse effect. Fears about man-made global warming are unwarranted and are not based on good science. The Earth's climate is changing now, as it always has. There is no evidence that the changes differ in any qualitative way from those of the past. And there is a very good video, recent video. And I will play a few minutes of William Happer speaking at this university, How to Think About Climate Change, and it was posted February 24, 2021. So many people are still fighting the lies. And I am just picking up where William Happer begins to talk. You can listen to the first two minutes. This man is obviously very qualified to speak on the subject. Thanks so much, Tim. Yeah. Well, I, I certainly uh, appreciate the uh, honor of speaking to this gathering, uh, getting to know a little bit more about Hillsdale College, which, uh, of course, I knew about before, but not in such detail as I've learned over the last day or two. Um, the title of my talk is uh, How to Think About Climate Change. and let me see if this clicker works. I hope it works. Uh, good, okay. So the first thing to, uh, the best way to think about the uh, uh, frenzy over climate is it's a kind of a modern version of the medieval crusades. You remember that the uh, motto of the crusaders was Deus vult, uh, God wants it. And uh, it's hard to pick a better virtue signaling slogan than that. Yet. But uh, so far, most of the, uh, the climate enthusiasts have not gone that far. Some have, actually. They uh, claim they're doing God's work. Uh, because decades of propaganda, many Americans, perhaps including some of you here today, think there really is a climate emergency. Uh, those who think that way, uh, in many cases, they mean very well, but they've been mislaid by decades of uh, misinformation. So as a scientist who actually knows a lot about climate, and I set up many of our climate research uh, uh, centers when I was at the Department of Energy in the early 1990s, uh, I can assure you that uh, there is no climate emergency. There will not be a climate emergency. And crusades have always ended badly. Uh, they've brought discredit to the supposed righteous cause. They've brought hardship and death to multitudes and policies to address uh, this phony climate emergency will cause uh, great damage to American citizens and to their environment. 
What is heating up on February 4th? Uh, Bernie Sanders and uh, Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez and Congressman Blumen Nauer from Oregon and introduce legislation, I quote from Blumenauer's website, legislation mandating the declaration of a national climate emergency. The National Climate Emergency Act directs the President of the United States to declare a national climate emergency and mobilize every resource at the country's disposal to halt, reverse, mitigate, and prepare for the consequences of this climate crisis. Well, there isn't a climate crisis. There will not be a climate crisis. This is utter nonsense. Okay. It gets worse when you get to the state levels where there's a little less uh, checks and balances. This are, these are remarks made last week by Charles Ismay, uh, the Undersecretary for Climate Change, in, in Massachusetts, and it was made to the Vermont Climate Council, so I'll, I'll uh, read it to you. So let me say that again, 50% of our emissions that need to be reduced come from you, the person across the street, the senior on fixed income, right? There's no bad guy left, at least in Massachusetts, to point the finger at, to turn the screws on. And you know, to break their wills, so they stop emitting. That's you. We have to break your will. Right. I can't even say that publicly. Well, uh, a few days later, Ms. Mr. Ismay resigned. Uh, and had he not, his governor would have fired him. <laughs> but that's the way crusades are, you know. This is really not a question of science. This is a question of a secular religion for some. It's a question of money for others. It's a question of power for others. But whatever it is, it's not science. So uh, uh, during the uh, medieval crusades, uh, uh, part of it was against uh, the supposed threat to the holy sites in Jerusalem, but a lot of it was against local enemies. So the, the uh, medieval inquisition really did a job on the poor Cathars and the Waldensians of southern France and the Bogomils in the uh, Balkans. And climate fanatics uh, don't know or care any more about the science of climate than these medieval inquisitions knew or cared about the teachings of Christ. So just about everyone wants to live in a clean environment. I do. I'm sure everyone here does. And uh, this is a photograph. Uh, I hope it shows up on the screen. I don't see it just yet. Of Shanghai. And uh, that's real air pollution. Uh, you can just barely see the bottle opener building in the back through all the haze. and. Uh, some of this is actually due to burning coal, but a bigger fraction is due to dust from the Gobi Desert. They've had this type of pollution in Shanghai since the days of Marco Polo and long before. And part of it is burning uh, rice fields, the stubble in the fields, uh, which is traditionally done there. And uh, this is the kind of thing that I do not support. I wouldn't want to live in a city like that. And if there's anything to do, that will make it better. I, I would certainly support that. But none of this has anything to do with uh, CO2. CO2 is a gas you can't see, smell, or taste. Uh, so harebrained schemes to limit emissions of CO2, which is actually beneficial, as I'll explain a little bit later, will only make it harder to get rid of real pollutants like the pollutant I showed you in Shanghai. Okay, I will <clears throat> link below. You can watch, you know, Will Happer, his whole talk on, on this climate change. It's only propaganda. So they use pictures like this, you know, in, in Shanghai to claim that this is CO2, and it's a lie. So um, let me just go back to reading a few more quotes there are so many here, and these quotes are from climatologists, meteorologists, uh, physicists, environmental scientists, all qualified to speak on the subject. I am a skeptic. Global warming has become a new 
religion, Nobel laureate physics. Uh, Gary Mollis, who Gary Mollis, who actually created the <laughs> PCR test, but global warmers predict that global warming is coming, and our emissions are to blame. They do that to keep us worried about our role in the world, in the whole thing, sorry. If we aren't worried and guilty, we might not pay their salaries. It's that simple. Geology scientist, global warming is indeed a scam perpetrated by scientists with vested interests, but in need of crash courses in geology, logic, and the philosophy of science. <sighs> Paleontologist Committee for Scientific Research. The global warming scaremongering has its justifications in the fact that it is something that generates funds. Climatologist, research scientist with the Lamont Doherty Earth Obser Observatory at Columbia University. They feel that to stop worrying may mean to stop being paid. James Spann, billions of dollars are flowing into the pockets. Always follow the money trail and it tells a story. Meteorologist, former tornado forecaster in severe weather service, governmental officials are currently casting trillions down huge rat holes to solve a problem which doesn't exist. Remind you of another problem we are living through right now? Packs of rats Wait in that rat hole to reap trillions coming down to fill advocates' pockets. The money we are about to spend on drastically reducing carbon dioxide will line the pockets of the environmentalists. Some politicians are standing in line to fill their pockets. Large grants to the environmental experts. In case you haven't noticed, it is an expanding, profitable industry growing in proportion to the horror warnings by government officials and former vice presidents. Organic chemistry, dire predictions of catas catastrophe from that bottomless pit of disasters de jour. De jour. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change are based solely on um, computer models that amount to poorly crafted mathematical opinions, not experimental proof. There is no proof that man-made carbon dioxide causes additional warming or that carbon dioxide reduction would reduce warming. Meteorologist AccuWeather. The Earth's climate is ridiculously complicated, and carbon dioxide is not the only thing that influences the climate that is changing. In fact, probably everything in the Earth's climate system changes at one time or another. So Earth's changing climate cannot be entirely attributed to carbon dioxide levels rising. Former chief research scientist, Australia's Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organization, the suppression of scientific evidence that contradicts the causal link between human-generated CO2 and climate has been of great concern to ethical scientists both here in Australia and around the world. The echo hysteria that leads the Greens as well as the left-leaning media to attack any person who attempts to publish science that contradicts their beliefs is a gross example of the dangerous doctrine that the end justifies the means. Member of the Northland Conservation Board, mathematician around the world as controversy over climate change continues to grow. It remains very clear that contrary to what the politicians tell us, not only is there no consensus of scientific thought on this matter, but the science is certainly not settled. In fact, in a bizarre twist of fate, 
at a time when advocates of man-made global warming continue to push government policies to restrict energy use and the burning of fossil fuels in order to prevent catastrophic warming, the world continues to cool. That is leading to increasing skepticism that the call to sacrifice living standards in order to save the planet is just political spin designed to persuade the public to accept green taxes, designed to take away your property, designed to make you a slave. Astrophysicist, what I do with the IPCC report, put it in the trash because that's all it's worth. Carbon dioxide was an insignificant component of the Earth's atmosphere and that rather than being the purveyor of doom, it is currently viewed as today, it is needed to, in order for plants to grow. Carbon dioxide is not a pollutant. It's good. We need more of it. Talk about turning everything upside down. University of Houston, one of the designers of International Space Station, has a forthcoming, has forthcoming book, Climate Hysteria. Cause and effect relationships between atmospheric carbon dioxide concentrations from all sources and global temperatures are inconclusive. Although carbon dioxide levels have generally been observed to increase during warm periods and fall during colder ones, the temperature changes typically lead rather than follow carbon dioxide changes. Agricultural scientist, researcher, author, educator, University of Melbourne, there is no proof that carbon dioxide is causing or precedes global warming. All indications are that the minor warming cycle finished in 2001. Physicist, American Physical Society Fellow, I retired four years ago, and at the time of my retirement, I was well convinced, as were most technically trained people, that the IPCC's case for anthropogenic global warming is very tight. However, upon taking the time to get into the details of the science, I was appalled. I was appalled at how flimsy the case really is. I was also appalled at the behavior of many of those who helped produce the IPCC reports and by many of those who promote it. In particular, in particular, I am referring to the arrogance, the activities aimed at shutting down debate, the outright fabrications, the mindless defense of bogus science, and the politi uh, political Politicist. how political it has become. Analytical chemist and mathematician. I submit that there is no man-made man -made global cooling warming, that there is no study or research data that makes a good argument to that effect when carefully examined objectively and that the Earth has many different wide-ranging cycles that man cannot control no matter how much he would like to. Common sense regarding carbon dioxide emissions, the lack of. Carbon dioxide is not a pollu uh, pollutant. These are all scientists. Why is it that we are forced to listen to only the few scientists who claim carbon dioxide is causing global warming and it's going to be catastrophic and we've got to do something now, but we can't listen to all of the other scientists who dispute those claims. 
So I, I'm, I guess, considered to be anti-science. Really? All of these scientists are anti-science? Who claim the IPCC's models are not science? They're going to steal your property. Considering the ramifications of just listening to the few scientists who are lying to the public about global warming and climate change, mainstream media reporting all of that propaganda, your property is going to be stolen. Don't you think that it's time for everybody on the planet, because this is not just happening in the United States, everyone on the planet begin to open their minds and open discussion with these scientists? <sighs> Chemical engineer, 16 U.S. patents, written 55 technical papers, American Geophysical Union, authored a 2008 technical analysis of global warming, the lesson to the world here is, when it comes to science, never blindly accept an explanation from a politician or scientist who have turned political for their own private gain. Taxing carbon will have absolutely no beneficial effect on climate, will hurt the economies of the world, and will be harmful to the production of food because less carbon dioxide means reduced plant growth. There's a whole lot. <laughs> Members of the Royal Society, a body once noted for its cultivation of debate in science, are now leaders of the Science is Settled camp. I will link below. You can read more. If people can't open their mind, if people can't begin to have discussion about what really is taking place here, your property, their property, all property will no longer be private property. <laughs> 